Welcome to the Kuya Dev Tidbits Podcast, where we explore the ins and outs of building a successful career in the tech industry. My name is Rem, your Kuya Dev, and I'm excited to have you join me for this episode. Whether you're just starting out, looking to shift careers into tech, or hoping to grow more as a tech professional, this podcast is for you. Thank you for tuning in, and together, let's enjoy the episode. Episode number 10. Finally, we've come to the tail end of this season. Season 4 of the Queer Dev Tidbits podcast. And quite honestly, this has been, so far, the hardest, the hardest season of my podcasting career. It's because it's been really hard trying to squeeze in time to record my episodes given my really hectic schedule. It's quite annoying that there's only 24 hours in a day. And for things that I've been doing, it's just 24 hours, just too little. Too little time. So, yeah. uh, I end up recording my episodes at you know, midnight, and last episode was the worst. I ended up recording at around 3 a.m. and up to 4 a.m. And it's just... My, my, my wife was complaining the other day because she was... She's, she's the one editing um, my episode. So she had to really cut out a lot, a lot of sections of that. Uh, previous episode because I was just staring straight in the camera saying nothing just you know staring staring blankly so yeah given that I want to apologize because um I think uh, my exhaustion the time the just being tired contributed contributed to you know a bad state of mind and I ended up with a wrong choice of words in which I use incompetent instead of inexperienced or unqualified. You know? And if it made anyone out there um, uncomfortable, I apologize. I didn't mean that. Exhaustion is not an excuse, but you know it might have some factor in that. But uh, yeah, I'll try to do better. Uh, despite you know being tired right now, I'm currently uh tired i just finished off another hard uh, coding session but uh yeah um despite that you know i'm enjoying this uh, don't get me wrong it's just that i it's hard trying to squeeze in uh trying to juggle a lot of things uh, all at the same time i'm just one person but you know i hopefully after this season i get to Take some rest outside of the podcast, you know, and take uh, two to three months of rest uh, away from the podcast and regroup uh, before starting with season five. But uh, yeah, we still have three episodes left. Um, so I want to thank everyone who has been, you know, tuning in to the podcast, especially those who have been here since season one, episode one. And you know, we are now going to episode five, right? That's so I didn't imagine. I didn't think that I'd reach this far. You know, um season five just I never really planned on having a season five, you know. It never really occurred to me, but here we are and I wanna thank everyone who has been supporting the the podcast. Uh you guys are keeping me going. You know, especially those who have been messaging, sending messages of thanks through the email, through Facebook, through everywhere, uh, through comments on YouTube. Thank you guys. You you're you're making this effort worthwhile. And you know, just because of that, I just want to continue on creating more content. Uh, even though you know it's been hard and it's been challenging, 
you guys just you know provide me with the motivation the push for me to continue this and i thank you all and i just have one request you know from all of you aside from of course uh, if you want to send uh, any more messages just feel free to do so <laughs> it might not seem that i i'm not reading them but i do i read all of them i just don't have the time to reply to all of them but uh, yeah uh, do know that i read all of them so just one request aside from that is that i want you guys to you know i'm i'm hoping for you guys to to share this to your friends to your colleagues to your classmates to your family to your relatives so that you no, know, mas lumaki pa yung reach ng podcast. And I will really appreciate that, you know, and make this effort even more worthwhile. The larger the impact, the more people that will be listening here, the more it will be worth it for me to create even more content. So, yeah, again, thank you and uh, share this. I'll really appreciate it. So, yeah, um, for this episode, I just want to discuss something that's not really realized by a lot of people. In that, it's something that concerns decision making. So, every time we make decisions, it's human nature for us to want the best of all worlds. You know, if you want to decide, for example, uh to take this one path or to take this one option you want that option to be the perfect or you, actually we want it to be perfect without any drawbacks and in reality that doesn't happen you know the earlier that we that that we realize that it's a very rare thing for an option to be perfect without any drawbacks the better we or the faster and the better we make decisions so, for example, in, in tech, if you're a, someone who's tasked to create a project, you would have to decide on the libraries to use, for, on the tools you would have to use, the database or the front-end library, front-end framework. And if, you're, if it's your first time to do that, you would probably um, have a hard time choosing which one to use. And it's not a good idea to just follow which one is or to choose which one is popular never choose a tool or a library just because it's popular i mean it's it should be one of the 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 factors that you could consider one of the considerations but it shouldn't be the main one what i think should be the main one aside from of course does it solve the problem the second main one would be what are the trade-offs what are we sacrificing if we choose this particular option and which trade-offs are we willing to take like for example in react there's there are a lot of state management libraries out there state management solutions there's redux there's jotai there's uh what's the other one zustan and a bunch of others Often people would choose Redux because it's, because it's popular, you know. Almost everyone is using it. But for me, you know, like just this couple of months, we had to choose which library to use for our application. So Redux we considered, but we ended up choosing another library. We chose to stand. For me, Redux is very great. It's great for a lot of large applications, complex applications. But for our use case, we don't really have some a large uh, front-end application. So we didn't really need Redux. It's very powerful. Redux can, you know, can handle a lot of use cases. But the drawback is there's a lot of boilerplate code you would have to write just to perform a simple task. And I wasn't, or we weren't, uh, willing to take on that trade-off. More boilerplate code is it's going to mean more maintenance moving forward. And we are trying to avoid that. So we went with Zustan, which was as simple as it can get. you know, And it 
was uh, written by people who have been involved with Redux before. So they took the the mistakes that they think was were were mistakes when they wrote Redux and applied those learnings to Zustand. But Zustand has its own, you know, you know, its own drawbacks. But for us, the drawbacks weren't really important, or were things that we could just live without. So, yeah, we chose Zustand instead of Redux. So for decision making, you know, we want to dis- to to consider what are the drawbacks, what are the trade offs. If you aren't aware of the trade offs. It's going to cause problems down the line. Like for example, in most companies, a lot of managers, a lot of owners want their developers to focus on all features. They have these wish lists of features they want to build and they want developers to focus on all of them. And this has happened to me and this has happened to a lot of my friends and a lot of people that I know, especially in companies that are building applications for other clients in that the focus every day changes for example we have a b c and d features and the direction of management is all of them are urgent but of course most probably developers don't have the capacity to to work on all of them so they would have to choose which one to to prioritize at one at a time you know every day i think I'll, I'll just you know i'll just uh pull from my own experience so there was a time in my young tech career in which every day uh, whenever you wake up and report for work uh th- during that day you don't have any idea what the priorities of management are and the priority yesterday would change the next day like if you're building a b c d a would be for monday b would be for tuesday and maybe a again for wednesday and you don't know you know depends on the on the mood of the ownership and often it's very stressful because management thinks or management thought that by by doing so all of the features that they want to be delivered would be delivered perfectly and on time. They didn't realize that there's going to be a lot of trade-offs with that kind of approach. And there's been a lot of instances during that time wherein I'm building this feature A. Then, during delivery of feature A, they are looking for feature B. Even if you explain that if we do feature A, B would have to be sacrificed. But they don't really, they don't want to accept that. They want the teams to deliver both with the same time frame, with the same allocated resources, which was impossible to do. Because you would have to decide which one to prioritize, A or B or C or D. But apparently, they want A, B, C, and D, which was, you know, we ended up, or we often end up not delivering anything. Because, you know, the focus of the development team would go from one project to another without really finishing anything. Because they don't really know, you know, what to focus on. The time was limited. The resources was limited. Developer bandwidth was very limited. But despite that, the bandwidth was very scattered among all projects. Nothing was getting delivered. And, you know... People start playing the brain game and everything. And just because management wasn't aware of the trade-offs or wasn't willing to, to accept that there will be trade-offs. And believe me, there will always be trade-offs. And that's what you know I love about my about my current company. They're very self-aware in that every decision would probably cause trade-offs. There will never be a perfect decision. And the approach would always be, let's just be aware that this will cause this particular uh, trade-off. Are we willing to accept this trade-off? If yes, go ahead. 
you know, with this with this decision. If not, let's reconsider and maybe this option, this other option is more viable. So yeah, I want everyone to to be very conscious of the trade-offs. Not only the the benefits of an option. Because, because you never know. You never know down the line, you know. If you're not aware of the trade-offs and it you know comes back at you, you know, it, it explodes on your face and you weren't aware that there's going to be this particular um, consequence of the of the decision and you weren't aware and you aren't willing to accept that uh, that consequence then it's going to be disastrous for you if it's from within the context of a company it's going to be disastrous for the company so yeah even for especially for uh, people who have been thinking whether to choose uh, going to school or taking a four-year course or going to boot camp or self-studying to get into tech. There's no perfect decision here. Obviously, I'm biased towards self-learning, not going to boot camp and not going to no, not going back to school, not going back to college. But the self-learning route has its own trade-offs. Like you won't have a structured instruction, a structured study path, or a st- structured curriculum. You won't also have study buddies you know people you could study with you could people you could consult with you are left to yourself you are left accountable for your own learning versus like a boot camp there's an instructor instructor there that could guide you and you have classmates same with college you would have classmates you would have professors you would have instructors but then again there are trade offs when going to college you would have to spend a lot of money you would have to to exhaust a lot of time four years at least of your time without any guarantee of getting a job after graduating same similarly you know when going to boot camp three to six months is going to be fast and a lot of newbies a lot of complete beginners have been complaining of how really fast-paced boot camps are. And despite of what they say, there's no real guarantee of landing a job. So these are three options. There's no perfect, perfect decision. School is expensive. Boot camps are really expensive. And they can really eat into your, if you get the uh, study now, pay later plan, they could really eat into your salary. Self-studying, Although I like it, I love it. I've been I've been a self-taught uh, developer. There's going to be trade-offs there. You will be saving a lot of money, but you're left alone. Of course, there are you know there there will, there will be ways to mitigate those trade-offs. Actually, in terms of self-studying, it's kind of easy to mitigate those trade-offs. Like you know you don't have classmates. You could ask forums, right? You could go to reddit you could go to tecker shifter philippines you could go to a lot of this these facebook groups and ask you know stack overflow ask you could go to meetups you know, and consult with people uh, attending those meetups you gain back you know the somehow not not all you know of course you would have uh, mentors and uh, classmates on a daily basis versus a school or a a boot camp but whenever you have the chance, you could, you know, you could consult. You could message people. People, you know, people will reply on, on, on the internet when you post a question. And for that other trade-off, you know, lacking curriculum, lacking a roadmap towards uh, the path that you want to take, there are a lot of resources on the internet that you could follow. Actually, you could uh, build your own computer science um curriculum for free without going to college there's open i think open source uh computer science degree you could just search it uh, open source computer science or oscs i think and you could follow that curriculum you are after the learning not the diploma that's already already very very solid 
I, I looked into that curriculum. It's you know it, it has everything from from networking to uh, alg the algorithms, data structures to uh, I think even uh, machine learning. It has everything that you need, you know, to build that skill set that computer that computer science school or college is already offering, and everything is for free. And or if you want, you could pay for uh pay for getting the certificates but you could you know take them for free a lot of those courses are are actually free you know, free to take on the other hand in boot camps you know you would have to again uh shell out a huge sum of money you could take the study now pay later route but that also has its own trade-off or you know um you could you could apply for scholarships if they're available, right? So yeah, the earlier that we recognize that a lot of decisions come with a lot of trade-offs, and the earlier that we we realize that we need to take to into account which trade-offs we are willing to take, I think the better decision maker we become, and the better or the faster we make our decisions. Because you already know what to look out for. And maybe you could find ways to mitigate those risks. So the earlier that we realize that decisions come with trade-offs. And we need to take to, into account which trade-offs we are willing to, to accept. I think the better decisions, decision maker we become. And as we um, get better at it, we become better and faster at making decisions. And it also prepares us for the worst, knowing that this this is something, or there there are these set of trade-offs. We are prepared. You no, know? we can prepare ourselves if the worst case scenario happens. So with that, I'll see you next episode. And yeah, before I, before before I go, uh, I just want to remind you: the next couple of episodes would be an interview of another uh, tech professional this time would be an, an interview of philip balbas he is a former pharmacist turned web developer he is a good friend of mine and i think you would you know get a lot of insights from his uh, uh, dev story in tech career journey again he's a career shifter a pharmacist you know think about that someone who's you no know, doesn't have any programming background doesn't have any engineering background getting into tech through hard work and uh, perseverance and uh, yeah having seen him uh, grow through the years he's one of the best uh, i think that i uh, developer that i know currently and uh, yeah um i'm really excited to 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 share that interview with you so something to look forward to next week again thank you for listening and i'll see you uh, on that next couple of episodes thank you for joining me for another episode of the kuya dev tidbits podcast i hope it will be helpful to you in your tech career journey Remember, building a successful career in tech takes time and dedication. But with the right mindset and resources, anything is possible. If you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends and colleagues. And if you have comments, suggestions, or any questions or topics you'd like to hear more about, feel free to email me at rem at kuya.dev. I'd also love to hear your own stories and experiences. So don't be shy, reach out and share them with me. I'm always here to support you in your tech journey. Do also join our community, Tech Career Shifter Philippines at www.techcareershifter.com. Until next time, keep learning, growing, and chasing your dreams. Thank you again for listening. And I'll see you in the next episode.